What's up, Virgo? Ooh, sorry, I'm a little zoomed in here. Okay. Anyway, uh, welcome to your general timeless reading. My name is Jordan. I'm a master Reiki practitioner and I'm a tarot reader. So if you want a personal reading or a Reiki session, go ahead, book it down below through my website in the description box. I have 20% off all my services now through the end of December. And, um, I have free 15 minute readings being given away on my Patreon channel for all brand new and upgrading tier two MV patrons. So go ahead, check out all them goodies and let's get into your reading. Like, share, subscribe, give this video a thumbs up. It helps the channel grow all that stuff. Intro, intro done. Okay. Well, let's, uh, do some fun stuff today. Virgo, Virgo, you feel very, uh, spicy, spicy in the sense of like, you kind of want to break out of your shell, but you're like, my shell has a plan. I'm trying not to have a plan because I'm a very big planner, but I want to be free. But does freedom have a schedule? <laughs> you know, and you're like, wait, no, no schedules. Um, I feel you. I have a lot of birth placements. I get you. Um, you're, you're just trying to break down that whole way of containing yourself, which is really nice. Ooh, yeah, let's use this. I don't use this deck very often. The good tarot, probably because we're not good here. No, I'm just kidding. We're a little naughty. No, I'm just kidding. What is wrong with me today? <laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> so stupid. Let's get into it. Let's see what's going on. You're breaking down a lot, a lot of ways of just how you maneuver through your day and actually how you hold yourself, which I really, really like. I think we're drawn to this deck because this is a very high frequency deck to me. It's a very gentle deck and Virgo energy to me is very gentle. It's very nurturing. It's very caring, but it's very methodical. It is very methodical. This is a very earthy deck to me. Um... You are earth energy. That was, that was really, I don't know. I don't like saying stuff like that. It sounds very stupid. Let's see. There I go. Being critical of myself. Anyway, earth, Capricorn, sorry. Six of earth in reverse, six of pentacles. Um, this is you recognizing the imbalances and imbalances aren't necessarily like things out of whack. It's the thing is that you find in your mind, in, in your perspective, that are not 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 flying anymore you're like i don't like the way this is going this to me is something that needs to be repaired right six of pentacles in reverse okay okay virgo okay there's other people coming in now you're starting to learn to ask for help it makes you uncomfortable. <laughs> Two of wands in reverse and the hermit. <laughs> You're like, I really don't want to do this. I rather go on a path where I have control of everything and I can do this myself. I'm trying to break away from that habit of really isolating myself though. It's okay for me to lean on other people. Yeah. You're trying to get into this energy of learning to have more fun and that fun can include other people. It can include exploring just trying new things getting outside your comfort zone i like this energy a lot let's see what else is going on for virgo queen of pentacles in reverse you're breaking down so many things and then the chariot yeah this is really really good i don't mind the queen of pentacles in reverse because these are the things you're releasing I do not feel at all that this represents your current energy. This represents the realizations that you're having, which is why the chariot is upright. Very rarely do I actually get the chariot upright in readings. Typically the chariot is in reverse because it's representing the places that you are going or the shift in direction that is necessary or to come about due to the healing that you're working through. The chariot's freaking upright for you because you're like, I'm making these damn changes and nobody's going to stop me. Not even myself. I'm done standing in my own way. I'm done with all these things that are holding me back. Even if those things are myself, right? You're like, nope, that's not happening anymore. Let's fix this situation we got going on over here. Okay. Let's get comfortable. Uh, so many things, so many things with so little things inside of it. Anyway, that's funny. <laughs> 
I swear, I have more fun just sitting talking to a camera than I do another lie. I have fun with people too. Anyway, three of fire, three of wands, bottom of the deck. This is the new opportunity. This is the ships coming in. This is the minor to the major. Three of wands and the chariot, new opportunities, your path opening up, right? Things coming in. I like this. I want to see the people that are involved in this because there's definitely other people. I guess we're just using larger tarot decks today. I have to really emphasize those words because people like to make sexual innuendos when I don't enunciate those words properly. Okay. <laughs> anyway, let's um let's get into the six of pentacles. Let's see the things that you're breaking down. Honestly, for a lot of you, this feels like perspectives. It feels like a lot of sword energy. Sword and wand energy, which is creation, the things that you're trying to build, bring to life. <clears throat> Ten of cups in reverse. You are not happy. You're not happy. You're not content. You're not satisfied whatsoever with the things that are not floating your boat. Seven of pentacles, wow, you see it as a failure. And the four of pentacles, oh my gosh. You're like, I need to let all this go. I don't wanna do it anymore. I don't wanna take part in it anymore. Oh, this got poopy really quick. Two of swords, hierophant in reverse, ace of wands in reverse. Oh, golly gee whiz. Eight of cups. Some of you are just really disappointed. You're just really, really disappointed. And the Knight of Pentacles. Okay, some of you, this is something you really spent a lot of time, a lot of energy investing in, really trying to build it. The Knight of Pentacles is Virgo energy. It is also the most methodical, slowest moving knight in the deck. And that's probably why there's so much emotional investment in this. Some of you, it is a relationship. With the Hierophant in Reverse though, this is just something that was a contract. It could have been a business. It could have been a financial investment. It could have been a relationship. Hierophant in Reverse says that it is done. The contract is done. You're letting it go. Four of Pentacles is the card of the release, right? You're no longer protecting it. It's no longer precious to you. You're like, this is garbage. Like, I'm, I'm over it. It is a failure to me. The Seven of Pentacles in Reverse, no longer investing in it. It's not worth my time. It's not worth my energy. Ten of, pu ten of Cups. I almost said Pucks. Ten of Cups. It does not make me happy. It does not make me feel fulfilled anymore. It is not satisfying me. It's not bringing me the emotional fulfillment that I was hoping it would. If anything, it's bringing me more stress and it's making me feel stagnant. And it's not the beginning that I was hoping it was going to bring to fruition, right? Bottom of the deck is the Eight of Cups. It is really hard for you to walk away from this, not because of the emotional attachment, but because of the amount of investment that was put into it. Because Virgo, the energy is like, I don't like wasting my time. It kind of feels like that. I don't like wasting my time. And so that's what this is. It's the realization of, I'm no longer gonna waste my time on things just because I put time and energy into them. I'm gonna spend my time doing things that make me happy. And it's that energy of liberation. Like, why the f am I still doing this if it don't make me happy? Why am I doing this if it doesn't bring me fulfillment? It's learning to say no. It's learning to say, no, nope, I don't listen. Oh, you wanna do that? You want me to help you do that? I love you. I love you so much. But I don't want to go to that party tonight just because you want me to go. Nope, it would make me uncomfortable. I don't want to be around all those people because I don't really like those people. And I'm not going to put myself in a situation where I'm uncomfortable just for you. Sorry. Nope, not self-sacrificing. Not doing it. It's not a reflection of my care for you. I'm just not going to put myself in a situation that is not of my highest good for the sake of somebody else. Nope, not gonna do it. That's not selfish. That's just self-respect. Very, very different. Now, if somebody's asking you, hey, can you hold this for me because it's really heavy? Or hey, can you help me clean this up? Like, there's a difference between helping somebody and then self-sacrificing. So know the difference, okay? Like, hey, can you help me clean up the kitchen after we ate dinner? Yeah, of course. Okay, <laughs> let's look at the two of wands in reverse. Eight of pentacles, six of pentacles in reverse, and the six of swords in reverse. You got a lot of sixes going on here. The six of pentacles, the six of swords, and the six of pentacles again over here. Okay, 
and then the ace of pentacles in reverse you are done with this and you're basically just telling me all over again that you don't want to do it and it was really hard for you to let go so i'm not going to rant about it again but the six of swords in reverse just told me that you're going through a really big struggle and you did not get a return on investment and you're really upset about the amount of time and energy you invested in it because eight of pentacles is the card of diligence and practice two of wands is you might have spent a lot of time trying to make it work when you're like i know deep down this is gonna this is not gonna work this isn't gonna work so why am i still pushing for it why am i still pushing for it because you didn't want to accept that it had failed there was an attachment to it and the attachment wasn't to the actual thing it was because of the fear of failure and that's something that you're accepting that it wasn't a failure it was a learning experience and you learned and you're like wow this actually doesn't make me happy so why am i doing it so let's look at the hermit this is probably that realization what this hermit energy is these are the other people king of swords there they are hi <laughs> hello welcome to the party they're telling you secrets the wheel of fortune in reverse i just heard they're telling you secrets wheel of fortune in reverse they're they're literally saying to you to give up on it it's not going to change because the hermit in reverse is the energy of ghosting right it's like just just give up on it just ghost it like just drop it right just stop because a hermit upright is like introspection, isolation, taking time to reflect. A hermit in reverse is just like dipping out. Like, I'm done here, right? King of Swords and the Wheel of Fortune is like, nothing's going to change. They're, they're telling you the truth. They're telling you the reality of it. This isn't going to go anywhere. Ghosting, right? Just, it's not going to go anywhere. Just drop it. They're telling you that harsh truth. And bottom of the deck is the Knight of Cups. Because there's not a true emotional investment in it. Ace of Swords. Again, that's the truth. It's just an attachment. Let's look at the Queen of Pentacles in reverse. This is the part of your shadow that you're seeing. I'm not taking all these that are face down. I'll take the ones that are upright. Two of Pentacles. You're not clear on how you really feel. And that's why you're a Queen of Pentacles in reverse. Right? Queen of Pentacles in reverse is my mini Empress energy. A Queen of Pentacles in reverse is not grounded in their actual self. Right? They are not feeling safe or secure or stable in the things that they're trying to think of creating or manifesting into the material world because in our feminine energy that is where we bring ideas to life right and masculine energy is where we bring them into the tangible okay like me doing this reading right now is manifesting from masculine energy is doing the tangible work to manifest my prosperity my monetary income right things like that and my feminine energy would think of that amount, like how much I want to make. You understand? I'm not saying that to be like conceited or an ass. It's just an, an, an example, right? Because we think we manifest from our feminine. So if your feminine has an idea, because this is my work, like let's just be realistic about what it is. That's just the perfect example to use. So if you're manifesting from thought, like I make X amount of money every week, the masculine energy, your, your feminine energy is going to visualize how you go about making that money. So let's say you work in an auto shop. You picture how many cars a week you're going to see and you write that number out or however you prefer to manifest. You visualize it, you speak it aloud, you script it, you vision board it. However, you write it on toilet paper and then you flush it out. I don't I really do, do not care. Whatever floats your boat, right? And then your masculine energy goes to that auto shop and puts in the hours, puts in the work, does the tangible exchange of energy with the universe to attract it. You don't just sit back and receive it all the time. You sit back and receive from the feminine, but your masculine needs to put in that energetic work to attract it as well. It's the exchange of energy, okay? Let's look at the chariot. But your feminine is not really emotionally invested in this at all. Yeah, and so you're mourning this, you're letting this go, and that's what's actually bringing you into alignment with your true self. And the high priestess, holy shit. And then you have death in reverse underneath that. The chariot. So you're going through this massive mourning of realizing you've been investing either in a, in a person, a relationship, right? Or a project or another aspect of your life just for the sake of being very attached to it. There was no actual emotional connection to it. It was the ego being attached to something because there was a fear of failure. A fear of if I let this go, that means I don't have it anymore. And then what's there? Then what? Okay, well then what? You have space for something new. You have space for a new opportunity, a change. And change isn't scary. And if there's a part of you that says it is, that's a limiting belief. 
that's rooted in the ego and that's what needs to be healed right change is not scary there's a need to face and address that part of you that's scared of change that's scared of releasing this attachment right because when you do release it that's when you're going to move forward on your path that's when you move into alignment two of cups with your most authentic self the two of cups is not only a very spiritual relationship a very aligned relationship it's also that relationship itself it's a balanced masculine and feminine energy your manifesting energies right your dualities okay and in turn you connect with your high priestess your higher consciousness your third eye right it's very neptune energy for me as a reader it's seeing beyond the veil and with death in reverse this triggers a very deep spiritual transformation right where you can shift your consciousness to a higher frequency where you attract the energies that help you progress forward the chariot so let's see what this new um path is bottom of the deck you have the page of swords and then the hangman you're realizing wow bottom underneath that is the seven of swords you're realizing that this was a self-sabotaging behavior because the hangman is the new perspective you're realizing you were not being honest with yourself the page of swords to me is the liar in tarot so you were not being honest with yourself about the reality of the situation right you didn't see it and now you do with the hangman right and the seven of swords is the self-sabotaging behavior that this was actually stopping you from progressing forward let's look at the three of wands page of wands in reverse it's the opportunity to heal these deep wounds right the fear of rejection the fear of failure the fear of change so you can progress forward the king of pentacles in reverse the nine of wands and then the paranormal in reverse the paranormal is the curiosity right it's you're no longer curious because now you see very clearly that your masculine and feminine energy your king and queen of pentacles energy your builder energy your material world energy had limiting beliefs about failure, scarcity, security, uh, stability, right? The creator in you didn't know how to bring things into the tangible or have confidence to bring things in into the tangible. And that's what you're healing. Okay? Very, very nice. Because the Nine of Wands is the wounded warrior. It's like, can I really do it? Yeah, of course you can. Underneath that is the Eight of Wands in reverse, which is my block card in tarot. So this is what was blocking you or creating the stagnancy in your path right now, stopping that change from your path. Judgment it was the scarcity mindset, the five of pentacles. Okay. But this is what I have for you. I hope you enjoyed this reading, Virgo. I love you. I wish you the best. If you want a personal reading or a Reiki session to look into your own path, go ahead, book it down below. I have 20% off all my services through the end of the month. So go ahead, take advantage of that and check out Patreon if you want a free 15 minute reading. And I love you. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.